Satan is trying his best. I'm going to preach fast. Stir. Satan is trying his best to get in the church. Get in the church. Get in the church. I told him Friday night he's trying to infiltrate. And it's amazing to me is how he's using our own to get into the church. To infiltrate, infiltrate the church. Uh, I have been talking about it of late and I'm going to show it to you. I had thought about not doing it. Um, but I've been disgusted with what some of the leading uh, voices in, in, in our community have been doing. Um, I just think that there ought to be a certain amount of dignity to being a Christian. Kirk Franklin is a towering figure in gospel music, renowned for his ability to blend traditional gospel with contemporary sounds, bringing the genre to a wider and more diverse audience. His career, spanning over three decades, is marked by numerous accolades and achievements, including multiple Grammy Awards. Franklin's music not only serves as a source of spiritual inspiration, but also addresses various social issues earning him a unique position in both the religious and secular music worlds. However, Franklin's path has not been without its controversies. Recently, he has faced significant criticism from notable religious figures such as Pastor Geno Jennings and Bishop Wooden, igniting a broader debate within the gospel community about authenticity, integrity, and the role of gospel artists. Pastor Gino Jennings, known for his fiery sermons and unwavering commitment to biblical orthodoxy, has been particularly vocal in his critique of Franklin. Jennings accused Franklin of leading a fake lifestyle, suggesting that Franklin's actions and public persona do not align with the moral and spiritual standards expected of a gospel minister. Jennings' critique centers on the belief that Franklin's integration of secular elements into his music dilutes the sanctity of the gospel message. This criticism has struck a chord within the gospel community, prompting discussions about the true essence of gospel music and the responsibilities of those who minister through it. Bishop Wooden echoed Jennings' sentiments, expressing concern over what he perceives as Franklin's failure to uphold the moral and spiritual standards of the gospel music industry. Wooden's criticisms focus not only on Franklin's musical style, but also on his personal conduct. He argues that as a prominent figure in the gospel world, Franklin should exemplify a lifestyle that is beyond reproach, reflecting the values and teachings of the Christian faith. These criticisms have reverberated throughout the gospel community, sparking a wider debate about the expectations placed on gospel artists and the balance between their public and private lives. I was watching the message this morning. From last night, and you know on YouTube they're having a corner of the things. Mm -hmm. And they had something that came up. I'm like, what in the world is this? They had Kirk Franklin. Oh my lord. Just dancing like the world, which I expect him to do because he's a sinner. That's right. The controversy surrounding Franklin brings to light the tension between the sacred and the secular in gospel music. Franklin's innovative approach, which blends gospel with elements of hip-hop, rabob, and pop, has undeniably broadened the genre's appeal. However, this blending of genres has led to questions about the authenticity and purity of gospel music. Purists argue that incorporating secular sounds and styles compromises the spiritual integrity of gospel music, potentially leading listeners away from its core message. On the other hand, proponents of Franklin's style argue that music evolves and reaching a broader audience can be an effective way to spread the gospel message. Franklin's response to the criticisms has been one of humility and steadfastness. He acknowledges his imperfections and emphasizes the themes of grace, redemption, and the transformative power of faith. Franklin's openness about his personal struggles, including his battle with addiction, has further humanized him and allowed him to connect with his audience on a deeper level. He maintains that his music aims to inspire and uplift, and that blending contemporary sounds with gospel is a way to reach those who might not otherwise be exposed to the genre. Despite the controversies, Franklin's impact on the gospel music industry remains profound. His ability to innovate and push the boundaries of the genre has inspired a new generation of gospel artists who are unafraid to experiment with different sounds and styles. Franklin's music continues to be a source of encouragement and empowerment, resonating with listeners around the world. His willingness to address social issues, 
such as racism, inequality, and mental health, through his music has also cemented his place as a relevant and influential figure in contemporary gospel music. And I've heard them say this, even some of the so-called gospel artists that sang. Mm. They was interviewing Kirk Franklin one day, I believe on The View. And they asked him, what do you think the problem with churches today? And he said, the problem with church today is too many rules. The debate ignited by Jennings and Wooden also highlights the broader issue of accountability within the gospel music industry. As public figures and spiritual leaders, gospel artists are often held to high moral and ethical standards. The scrutiny they face can be intense, with any perceived deviation from these standards leading to public criticism. This level of accountability is seen by some as necessary to maintain the integrity of the gospel message, while others argue that it can be overly harsh and unforgiving. Ignoring the fact that these artists are human and prone to mistakes like anyone else. Moreover, the controversy brings into focus the role of gospel music in modern society. In an era where music genres are increasingly blending and evolving, the lines between sacred and secular are becoming more blurred. Gospel music, traditionally seen as a genre confined to the church, is now reaching mainstream audiences. This evolution raises important questions about the future direction of gospel music and the balance between preserving its spiritual roots and embracing innovation and change. Franklin's journey also underscores the importance of dialogue and understanding within the gospel community. The criticisms from Jennings and Wooden, while harsh, have prompted important discussions about the role and responsibilities of gospel artists. These discussions are crucial for the growth and development of the genre, encouraging artists and listeners alike to reflect on their values and the impact of their music. Any preacher, any man who would say of his own process of writing songs that most of my songs that I wrote I wrote them buck naked in conclusion Kirk Franklin's career is a testament to the power of innovation resilience and faith in navigating the complexities of life and the music industry his ability to blend traditional gospel with contemporary sounds has not only broadened the appeal of the genre, but also sparked important discussions about authenticity, integrity, and the role of gospel artists. Despite facing significant criticism from figures like Pastor Gino Jennings and Bishop Wooden, Franklin's commitment to his faith and his music remains unwavering. His journey highlights the ongoing tension between the sacred and the secular in gospel music and the importance of accountability and dialogue within the gospel community. As the genre continues to evolve, Franklin's influence will undoubtedly remain a significant force, inspiring future generations of gospel artists to explore new horizons while staying true to the core message of the gospel.